The 27th of January, 1945. The Soviet Army enters Auschwitz, the largest of the extermination centers located in German-occupied Poland. It is estimated that a minimum of 1.3 million people were deported to this camp between 1940 and 1945, and of these, at least 1.1 million were murdered. However, not all of its prisoners died. In this Nazi factory of horror, the Soviet soldiers liberate more than 7,000 surviving inmates who are mostly ill and dying, and some of them were subjected to cruel and painful pseudo-medical experiments performed by one of the most sadistic Nazi doctors. His name is Karl Klaubeck. Karl Klaubeck was born on the 28th of September, 1898, in Wupperhof, then part of the German Empire. Klauberg was only 15 years old when the First World War began on the 28th of July 1914. As of 1916, he served on the Western Front as an infantryman, and in 1917 he was captured by the British and became a prisoner of war. The First World War ended on the 11th of November 1918 when the German leaders signed the armistice in the Compiègne Forest in France. Soon after, Klauberg was released from his captivity, and in 1920 he began studying medicine at the University of Kiel. He then continued with his studies at the University of Hamburg and the University of Graz. Upon his graduation in 1924, he worked as an assistant at the Institute of Forensic and Social Medicine at the University of Kiel. In 1925, he obtained a doctor's degree in medicine and started working as an assistant in the Gynecological and Obstetric Hospital, where he specialized in research on the sex hormones. On the 30th of January 1933, Adolf Hitler was appointed Chancellor of Germany by President Paul von Hindenburg. Several months later, on the 1st of May 1933, Klauberg joined the Nazi Party and the SA, where he held the rank of senior medical officer. Klauberg had not actively supported the Nazi Party before it came to power. However, he, as with the Nazi Party, embraced racial science, the false theory of biological racism. He believed that the Germans were biologically different from and superior to members of all other races. Racial science was a fundamental tenet of Nazi ideology, which Hitler used to justify the forced sterilization of persons with certain physical or mental diseases or physical deformities. The 1935 Nuremberg Race Laws, which among other things outlawed marriage between Germans and Jewish, Black or Romani peoples, were also based upon racial science. In the 1930s, Karl Klauberg was regarded in Germany as an authority on hormone research and his papers on infertility, castration, and hormonal treatment were published in specialist journals. He developed the production methods for two hormone drugs, Progenon and Proluton, for the pharmaceutical company Schering Kalbaum, in which he held shares. In August 1937, he was appointed associate professor by the University of Königsberg, carrying out research on female fertility hormones, particularly progesterone, and their application as infertility treatments, obtaining a habilitation for this work the same year. The Second World War began on the 1st of September 1939, when Nazi Germany invaded Poland. In 1942, Klauberg approached Heinrich Himmler, the head of the SS, who knew of him through treatment of a senior SS officer's wife, and asked him for an opportunity to perform mass sterilizations on women for his experiments. Himmler agreed, and in December 1942, Klauberg moved to Auschwitz-Birkenau, which was located in German-occupied Poland. Birkenau was the largest of more than 40 camps and subcamps that made up the Auschwitz complex. It was divided into ten sections, separated by electrified barbed wire fences. It was patrolled by SS guards, including after 1942 SS dog handlers. During its three years of operation, it had a range of functions. When construction began in October 1941, it was supposed to be a camp for 125,000 prisoners of war. It opened as a branch of Auschwitz in March 1942, and served at the same time as a center for the extermination of Jews. In its final phase, from 1944, it also became a place where prisoners were concentrated before being transferred to labor in German industry in the depths of the Third Reich. As part of their camp duties, medical staff at Auschwitz performed so-called selections. The purpose of the selections was to identify people who were unable to work. The SS considered such persons as useless eaters, and therefore murdered them. When transports of Jews arrived at Birkenau, 
The camp medical personnel selected some of the able-bodied adults to perform forced labor in the concentration camp. Those not selected for labor, including children and older adults, were murdered in the gas chambers. All visibly pregnant women and mothers of babies and young children were sent to the gas chambers upon arrival. Auschwitz not only provided prisoners for human experiments conducted at various other camps, but it also served as the site of a variety of human experiments. This is because of the number of prisoners sent there. The SS sent 1.3 million men, women, and children from many different national and ethnic backgrounds to Auschwitz. Researchers looking for human subjects who met specific criteria could more easily find them at Auschwitz than at other camps. Klaubag was one of more than a dozen SS medical personnel who conducted experiments on people imprisoned at Auschwitz, and one of his colleagues was the most notorious of the Nazi doctors, Josef Mengele. These doctors saw their appointment to Auschwitz as an exciting opportunity to advance their research. The experiments in the concentration camps permanently maimed many victims or caused them to die. In some experiments, death was the intended outcome for the victims. The medical professionals who conducted experiments at Auschwitz did not seek the prisoners' consent or inform them of their treatment or possible effects. The types of experiments conducted at Auschwitz included inflicting wounds on prisoners or infecting them with diseases to study the effects and test treatments, conducting unnecessary surgeries and procedures on patients for research purposes or to train medical professionals, murdering and dissecting prisoners for anthropological and medical research, and testing methods of mass sterilization. The Nazis wanted to exterminate all European Jews, but Germany needed them for forced labor, as during the war, Germany suffered from labor shortages, and out of approximately 10 million Jewish men and women, there were at least 2.3 million well fit for work. They were intended to be taken out and kept alive, but only on condition that they were sterilized and incapable of reproduction. This was one of the reasons why Himmler was so interested in mass sterilization. Klaubag's goal at Auschwitz was to find an easy and cheap method to sterilize women. On the 16th of January 1943, when all the machinery and equipment had been installed in Block 10, he started his pseudo-medical experiments on women. Block 10 was a brick-built one-story building located right next to Block 11, the so-called bunker, where until December 1943, executions occurred all the time in the yard and could be heard and seen from Block 10. This block housed the so-called experimental stations, in which SS doctors performed various experiments. On the ground floor of the block, there were two large hospital rooms called sick rooms, an x-ray unit, an operating theater, a dental station office, an institute of hygiene, a nurse's room, a room for the SS, and finally, a bath and toilets. Dr. Karl Klaubag, only 1.55 meters tall, was first and foremost a businessman who worked under contract from the German chemical industry, which paid him a lump sum for every woman he used in his experiments. The women were put on the x-ray table, and then a thick, concrete-like fluid mass was injected into their uterus and urethra with an electric needle. The pumping of the mass was controlled by x-ray, and photographs were then taken. The treatment was brutally performed, and due to the high pressure of the fluid mass injection into the women's uteri, and due to the chemical properties of the fluid mass itself, the women used for the experiments suffered from inflammation of the uterus, ovaries, fallopian tubes, and peritoneum. Admission to the room where the experiments took place was forbidden for everyone, even for SS women. However, during the experiments, the patients' screams were so unbearable that on-duty SS women rushed to their rooms to ask what was going on. After the photographs were taken, the women writhed in pain, often bled profusely, and excreted that thick fluid mass. Such experiments were conducted on the same women three to six times, in intervals of three or four weeks. Most of the female prisoners who went through the experimentation were sent to Birkenau to be gassed. The experiments were conducted on women, both elderly and young, who had already given birth, and less often on virgins. To ensure that women were not able to get pregnant again, the treatments were aimed at preparing women for artificial insemination. In May 1944, Klaubag sent a letter to Berlin, in which he repeated his request for permission to put together prisoners, 400 men with 250 women, who had already been x-rayed and prepared to accept artificial insemination. Some women were to be fertilized artificially, some naturally. From the day of sexual intercourse, the women were to be subjected to salpingography in order to obtain pregnancy photos in the earliest periods. 
The prisoners were to be located in Block 1, which was built between July and September 1944, some 500 meters behind the wires of the Auschwitz One Men's Camp. The model camp was to hold 3,500 women. There were shared toilets for men and women, with a half-meter divider. The block was intended only for Klaubag's research work. However, though all the preparations were made, permission from Berlin did not come, and the experiment did not take place. In the SS headquarters in Berlin, Klaubag's experiments on female prisoners raised great interest as they related to the Nazi plans for the biological extermination of entire nations. The course and results of Klaubag's sterilization procedures were closely followed, and when Himmler wanted to know how much time it would take to sterilize 1,000 Jewish women, Klaubag's answer was satisfactory. One doctor, with ten assistants, should be able to conduct sterilizations of a few hundred or even a few thousand Jews in one day. The number of women that Klaubag is believed to have sterilized in this fashion was estimated from 700 to several thousand. Sylvia Friedman, the nurse who was one of Klaubag's assistants at Auschwitz, later said, When a woman died after injection, Klaubag showed absolutely no interest, no reaction, as though the matter did not concern him at all. When the Red Army liberated Auschwitz on the 27th of January 1945, Klaubag was already at Ravensbrück, where he had fled to avoid capture by the Russians. Ravensbrück, opened in May 1939, was the only major women's camp established by the Nazis. Whilst at Ravensbrück, Klaubag even arranged for some of his research victims from Auschwitz to be sent there, and despite the extreme chaos, he would continue with the sterilization experiments on at least 35 women. But with the approach of the Allied armies three months later, he fled again, this time to Schleswig-Holstein, seeking to join the last group of loyal SS leaders surrounding Himmler. Klaubag was the only Auschwitz doctor to do so. Himmler was captured and committed suicide, and Klaubag too was captured by the Russians on the 8th of June, 1945, exactly one month after the end of World War II in Europe. Karl Klaubag was imprisoned in the Soviet Union for three years before being tried and convicted of war crimes and sentenced to 25 years imprisonment. But following Stalin's death in 1953, under the Adenauer Bulganin Prisoner Exchange Agreement, Klaubag was repatriated with other Germans in October 1955. He returned to West Germany, where he continued to work at his former clinic, but his behavior was grandiose and bizarre. He listed on his professional card various Nazi medical organizations and openly boasted of his achievements in developing a new sterilization technique at the Auschwitz concentration camp. When interviewed by the press, he spoke proudly of his work at Auschwitz and claimed, I was able to perfect an absolutely new method of sterilization, which would be of great use today in certain cases. In 1955, after a public outcry from groups of survivors, Klaubag was rearrested, but for a considerable time, the German Chamber of Medicine, the official body of the profession, resisted action against him that would divest him of his title of Doctor of Medicine. A group of former prisoner physicians of Auschwitz issued a declaration condemning Klaubag's actions there as being in total disaccord with the sworn duty of every doctor, and bitterly decrying the fact that such medical practitioners, who put themselves at the service of National Socialism to destroy human lives, are today in a position to practice once more the profession which they profaned in such a scandalous manner. In November 1955, the arrest warrant was issued in Kiel, shortly after Klaubag had already been committed to the psychiatric hospital at the request of his wife for threats of murder and manslaughter. At the beginning of February 1956, the experts established his sanity, but certified him as having an abnormal personality. When in March 1957, the German Chamber of Medicine finally removed his license, the 5'1 Karl Klaubag was a severely obese alcoholic. Klaubag was 58 years old when he died suddenly and mysteriously in his prison cell on the 9th of August 1957. It is believed that he wanted to reveal the names at the top of the Nazi medical hierarchy, and that consequently cost him his life. There were no tears shed for Karl Klaubag. Thanks for watching the World History Channel. Be sure to like and subscribe, and click the bell notification icon so you don't miss our next episodes. We thank you, and we'll see you next time on the channel.